everyone, we're just going to go through uh, a quick uh, video on how to design a splint uh, on the Medit Design app. So first things first, you're going to bring up your case and you really don't need to do anything with this, you can leave it empty. But what you're going to do is hopefully you've installed the design app by now and we're going to open it up. Okay, so it's on this top right, uh, Medit Design. We're going to load it up and it doesn't matter what scanner you use um, it, it, you can still use this software as long as you've registered for an account so we got no data to import from medit link so we're just going to cancel here and what we're going to do is we're going to import the files all right so import local files now you're going to find it um, on your wherever you put it whatever files you want to use um, and I'm going to find the folder here, zero to hero test case. We'll click, and we're going to put in the upper jaw and lower jaw uh, uh, files in. Okay, and that's basically what it's going to look like. All right, right click hold to uh, rotate, uh, middle uh, kind of like button, you hold it to reposition. Um, so those are the, the, the buttons. Okay. Now, first things first, we're going to design a splint for the upper. I'm going to hide this uh, lower jaw, and you just basically left click uh, this lower jaw icon over here. Um, before I start, if you want to choose the color, um, you can change it over here, all right? But anyway, I'm going to hide this over here, and we're going to start uh, with the edit mode. Now, this scan is very good, there's no holes in it, so you don't need to kind of like fill in any holes, but if you did have to, you would basically use this um, option here, fill holes, uh, but I don't need to do that here. Uh, don't need to really trim it that much as well, uh, I mean, if you kind of like do a, a scan and you've got lots of kind of like extra scan data, then you may want to um, kind of like uh, use this uh, trimming tool over here, okay? So first things first, we're going to create a splint. So we need to create an offset because you can't simply, you need a little bit of a space between the splint and the, um, and the teeth. Okay, so we're going to go down over here and there's some options over here. Okay, and we're going to go to this offset option. And we're gonna click, click on it. We're gonna choose the upper arch because that's what we're gonna design on and confirm. And next, we're going to choose our offset. Now, I usually, for my splints, put it between uh, 0 0.8 to 1, uh, uh, 0.08, I should say, to 0 0.1, depending on how many um, undercuts there are, if the teeth are very crowded or there's lots of rotations, then you may need to increase your offset. But let's put it at 0 0.1 today. Um, okay, so we're going, we're going to click Apply. And it's going to create a purple uh, copy with that offset in. So if you click here, here um, yeah, you can kind of like see uh, that there's a slight difference. Okay, so that's done. Next, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, essentially what we call duplicate. Uh, oh, sorry, we're going to create the um, the the we're going to block out the undercuts. Sorry, <laughs> uh, because um, you you need a kind of like straightforward path of insertion for your splints. So we're going to confirm this. I'm going to use that offset model that we created to, to create an offset model. Okay, so this is really easy. Basically, uh, the direction that you view the model on is basically where you're going to create your offsets. So you're going to hold that right click and then drag it to kind of like the position of the path of insertion. And then you're going to click this button, set arrow to viewpoint, boom, and then uh, your, your, that's going to kind of like create your, where your path of insertion is. And it's going to block out where the dark blue is. All right, and we're going to tick OK. All right, and we're going to hide this so we don't confuse ourselves. Um, and there's your offset model. All right. Uh, the next step is that we're going to have to duplicate this uh, layer. Now, this is probably going to be um, the, the, the longer step. I like, so this is the duplicate button. Uh, some people like using this um, polyline selection. I like uh, this brush selection. It's, look, it's personal preference. Um, and, but I like it because you just basically uh, hold the uh, left click and you just kind of like 
paint the areas that you want included, all right? So you're gonna form that rough outline of your splint. Uh, we're gonna drag this along. Now you do have to be careful because you're gonna, you, you wanna make sure that you don't have holes like this in your mesh. Um, so I'm just gonna do this and spend some time with this. I mean, you make sure that it, it, it's, it, you've got everything uh, that you want. The one thing that you have to be careful of is using this, um, the gen in general, 3D software, the view that you take is going to be what's going to be included. So when I'm painting uh, my, um, my brush over this model, if let's say I want to include this portion of the arch over here, I paint this over here, you see how uh, the, uh, the other side is included because it's visible. So you've got to be really careful about um, where your viewpoint is. To correct this, you basically go to this deselection mode and you paint it off. Okay, and then back on. So we're back in business. We're just going to paint what we want to include on our splint. Just uh, to form that rough outline uh, of your splint. As I said, this does take a bit of time. Um, it's not the most seamless software to use, but um, you definitely want to uh, kind of like a spend more time on this step because uh, it's probably the most important step. Basically designating what you want included in your splint. that I want to add a little bit there and a bit there I don't need that much coverage over here so I'm going to remove that yeah that looks looking pretty good I'm going to add a bit more over here oopsie daisy there we go I'm going to just trim those parts away and that is looking pretty good in my opinion you, it, once again just got to make sure that there's no holes um, in your mesh but yeah that's pretty much uh, what I want in my splint maybe you probably don't need that much on the sevens so I'm gonna just trim a little bit there Yeah, okay. And then after you're happy, you're gonna click apply. All right, so I'm gonna hide all of this. Let's remove that. Okay, so um, that's your outline of this splint. Okay, so you need to add some thickness to your splint, don't you? So the next step is, once again, you're gonna go back to edit mode. And now we have to go to this thicken um, uh, menu, click uh, this little shell that you've created, confirm, and I usually would start off with let's say 2.5. And then you choose uh, where you change the thickness, whether you want it all on the outside, which is what we want, or you can change it uh, all on the inside, um, like so, but that's not what we want, or both. So once again, we just want it on the outside, okay? Because we obviously don't want to ruin this inner fitting surface. And we're gonna put, click, to, yes, all right. So it's now starting uh, to look like a lot more like a splint. Does it look, yeah, okay. Now, we've got a bite. Um, so the next step is to actually remove all the interferences with your lower arch. So um, hopefully you've taken your scan with an open bite. Otherwise, you can do it in the software using this transformation tool. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, creating or opening a byte in software is very unpredictable. So it's always preferable that you take the byte um, during your scan. Okay, um, I have. So I'm just gonna, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to this uh, Boolean tool. Okay, and then we need to go cut because we need to cut the lower jaw, which is here, 
uh, you have to cut that from the uh, splint. Okay, and you can see the interference is showing through the the um, the mesh. Okay, so we're going to go to this middle option, cut B from A. We're going to put A as the splint and B as the lower jaw. All right, confirm. And hopefully uh, it will work. Let's take some time. And there we go, okay. It has worked. Um, with that, there we go. And you can see the interferences have been cut. Finally, you don't issue a splint like this because it can be quite rough. So what we need to do is we need to smooth it. So smooth surface. This icon over here, once again, paintbrush. Now, do you do not want to smooth the inner surface because that's gonna affect your fit. Um, so you're just gonna ro rotate and change the viewpoint so that they're just seeing that, um, that biting surface. And I would say increase it to a little bit over halfway. And then you just paint, okay? Uh, no need to uh, be so precise in this step. You just essentially wanna paint over where the areas that you want to um, smoothen off all right so I'm just going to do it over here as long as you do not smooth that precious uh, fitting surface because then you're going to be in trouble and your splint's not going to fit and you've got to be careful where especially at the front where it's not um, kind of like um, not being shown over here but you're not careful you can miss that when in your smoothing process and you check. Okay, I'm checking that my fitting surface is not uh, uh, painted. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And then you click yes, 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 yes. And that's basically uh, what you want to do. And um, if that's your final result, and if you're happy with it, click yep. And then that's uh, basically um, your your um, your splint uh, in a nutshell. Not the prettiest thing, and you'll probably need to polish it a little bit uh, chair side, um, uh, just to make sure it's nice and really smooth and there's no interferences anywhere, but you can uh, basically complete this, you can export it, and then you can um, export the, the splint STL um, into uh, your slice of your choice. But yeah, that's basically how you design a splint uh, on meta design.